Hi everyone. The first ebook from 5 Minute Biographies is now available. It's called The First 10 Presidents and is a collection of 5 Minute Biographies about the first 10 presidents of the United States of America. You can buy it now for Kindle on Amazon or if you'd like to get hold of a copy for free, head on over to the website for details. Welcome to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast, where every week we tell you interesting things about interesting people in about 5 minutes. And now here is your host, Wayne Armstrong. Hi, I'm Wayne Armstrong. Welcome to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast, Season 2, Episode 7, Yuri Gagarin. Yuri Alexeyevich Gagarin was born on the 9th of March 1934 in a small village called Klushino, which is about 190 kilometers from Moscow, Russia. His parents, Alexei Ivanovich and Anna Timofeyevna, worked on a collective farm, which is where a number of farmers work a farm together for the collective good, either for the benefit of the community or the state. Alexei was a carpenter and bricklayer, and Anna was a milkmaid. As well as Yuri, the couple had three other children, a boy called Valentin, who was older than Yuri, a girl called Zoya, who was also older, and another boy called Boris, who was younger. When the Nazis advanced on Moscow during the Second World War, the Gagarin residence was taken over by a Nazi officer, and the Gagarin family had to make do with a mud hut that they were forced to build for themselves at the back of the house. Measuring only three metres by three metres, they lived there for nearly two years until the occupation ended. Valentin and Zoya, Yuri's older brother and sister, were forced to move to Poland as slave labour in 1943, and they were not seen again until after the war ended in 1945. In 1946, the nearby town of Gazatsk became the new home for the Gagarins, and Yuri was able to continue his education there. When Yuri Gagarin was 16 years old in 1950, he became an apprentice foundryman at a steel plant near Moscow and took evening classes to complete a 7th grade education. He graduated in 1951 and entered into a training programme to study tractors at the Saratov Industrial Technical School. At the weekend he trained as a Soviet air cadet at a flying club near to Saratov and learned to fly. As he was also near to the Volga River, Yuri also earned extra money as a dock labourer. In 1955, after he had graduated from technical school, he was drafted by the Soviet Army, and as he was already a pilot, he was sent to the Air Force Pilots School located at Orenburg, which is about 1,600 kilometres to the east of Moscow, near to the border with Kazakhstan. There, he learned to fly the MiG-15 jet fighter, and took his first solo flight in the plane in 1957. On the same day as he graduated from Orenburg, 7th of November 1957, Yuri Gagarin married Valentina Ivanova Goryacheva, who was a medical technician graduate at Orenburg. They went on to have two daughters together, Yelena and Galina. By this time the Soviet space programme was accelerating, and the race was on against the United States to be the first to put a man into space, and so the search was on to find willing and able pilots. After a long selection programme, Yuri Gagarin and 19 other pilots were selected. Due to their performances during the arduous training programme, Yuri and another pilot called German Titov were shortlisted to make the first flight. In an anonymous vote by the other 19 pilots, all but three said that Yuri Gagarin should be the first to fly into space, so on the 12th of April 1961, he did, aboard Vostok 1. German Titov would become the second to do so, aboard Vostok 2, on the 6th of August the same year. Following his historic flight, where he also became the first human being to orbit the Earth, Yuri Gagarin became a national hero and a celebrity around the world. The scale of the demonstrations in support in cities throughout the USSR was second only to those celebrating the end of the war, he was paraded through the streets of Moscow on his way to a ceremony at the Kremlin where Nikita Khrushchev awarded him Hero of the Soviet Union. 
He travelled quite a lot after this around Europe and visited the United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, Brazil and Japan, among others. In 1962, Yuri Gagarin was elected to serve as deputy to the Soviet of the Union, which is one of the two chambers of the Supreme Soviet of the USSR. He was also elected to the Central Committee of the Young Communist League and returned to the cosmonaut facility at Star City to work on designs for reusable spacecraft. On the 12th of June the same year, he was also promoted to Lieutenant Colonel and then again to Colonel on the 6th of November 1963. During this time, Gagarin was the backup pilot for Vladimir Komarov, who was due to fly in Soyuz 1, and despite Gagarin's concerns that additional safety precautions had not been implemented, Soyuz 1 was launched. It crashed on its return after a parachute failure, and Komarov was killed. The accident led to the authorities banning Gagarin from further spaceflight missions due to concerns about losing a national hero in just such an accident. Yuri Gagarin became a deputy training director at Star City on the 20th of December 1963, and in 1966 he began training to re-qualify as a fighter pilot. On the 27th of March 1968, during a training flight, the MiG-15 in which he and his flight instructor, Vladimir Seryogin, were travelling, crashed near the town of Kerzhak, and both men were killed. The bodies of both pilots were cremated, and they're buried in the walls of the Kremlin in Moscow. The cause of the crash still remains somewhat of a mystery. Some have blamed a combination of errors by ground crew and air traffic controllers, whilst a more prominent theory in recent years involves a near miss with another aircraft, which caused Gagarin's MiG to enter an uncontrollable spiral dive. Yuri Gagarin and his achievements have been commemorated in a number of ways, since 1962, the 12th of April, the date he flew into space, was celebrated in the Soviet Union as Cosmonautics Day. This, since 2011, has been recognised by the United Nations as the International Day of Human Spaceflight. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin left a memorial satchel containing medals, in honour of Gagarin and Komarov, on the moon during the Apollo 11 mission, and the Cosmonaut Training Centre in Star City was renamed after him. In 1968, the town of Gazatsk, where he grew up after the war, was also renamed. It is now simply called Gagarin, in honour of its hero. I hope you enjoyed that episode of 5 Minute Biographies. You can also read these biographies for yourself on my website at www.5minutebiographies.com, where you will find quite a few biographies for your reading pleasure that have not yet been turned into podcasts. On the website, there are also places for you to leave a suggestion for a future biography or for you to get even more involved by writing a script for a future show. One of the best ways you could help me out, though, is to leave a review on iTunes, as that's a really important way to help the show to grow. Whilst you're there, make sure you subscribe as well, as that way you won't miss any future shows. You can also find us on Facebook at 5minutebiographies.com forward slash Facebook Twitter at 5minutebiographies.com forward slash Twitter and Pinterest at 5minutebiographies.com forward slash Pinterest. Finally, if you feel you'd like to make a donation towards the cost of producing more episodes, then you can do so through PayPal at 5minutebiographies.com forward slash donate. Any help, no matter how small, would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the 5 Minute Biographies podcast at www.5minutebiographies.com.